Hey everybody, good to see you. Good morning. So I begin with some announcements. Thank you, Jackie, by the way. Um, some announcements to begin with, weekly announcements, things that happen weekly. Uh, we have a couple fellowship opportunities during the week on Wednesday and Thursdays, both at 10 a.m. The Wednesday is uh, at Panera, Panera in Bristol. A group of us meets, myself included. Um, so if you would like to join us, you're always welcome. And then Thursdays at 10, uh, we're going to start meeting instead of the, co the courtyard. It's getting a little too cool for that. We're going to meet at Rebel Dog Coffee House here in Plainville at 10 a.m. So if you want to join me there uh, and others as well, please do. Uh, good, op good opportunity to get to know each other and a fellowship with each other as we connect to God. That's always an important thing, fellowship. Uh, Wednesdays at 7 p.m. is our midweek gathering. Uh, we're finishing up a, a series of, of discussions on Buddhism for Jesus followers. This will be our fourth of five uh, discussions. So if, you, if you'd like to join us for that, don't feel like you've missed anything. One doesn't necessarily build on the, on the other. If you want to join us, I'll catch you up and uh, enjoy it. I did want to point out in a couple, three, three Wednesdays, uh, we're going to start a new discussion looking at the, the book series that all the kids love and know, uh, Harry Potter. There's a book that is looks at Harry Potter, the series. It's called Echoes. Uh, it's a, a book other than the one I mentioned last week. I hope no one bought the book that I mentioned last week. It's called Echoes of the Gospel in Harry Potter. Um, so if you can, you can look for that book, um, it's by, um, I forget the, the name, Wyatt, Wyatt is the author's name. Um, so if you'd like to look at that, there, it's available on Kindle through Amazon. You can get a used copy pretty cheaply. It's a, a couple years old, but it's, it's a good read, and it looks at themes of Christianity, of Jesus' teachings in, in Harry Potter. So it'll be a good discussion, and not sure how long that discussion will last, maybe a, a month or more. Um, all the other activities this month are laid out in your, uh, your order of service, inserts there. There's Trunk or Treat went, uh, October 21st, and then that's a Friday, I believe. And then October 22nd, the Plainville Pumpkin Fest. We'll have a table there. Um, confirmation is the next day, 23rd, a Sunday. We meet after church um, for, it's going to be more like 90 minutes this year. Um, it's a lot to get through. <laughs> I ran out of time last, last year. Um, Red Cross is, the blood drive is November 5th, and that's a Saturday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. in honor of Russ Drakenberg, who uh, needed a lot of blood and was grateful, of course, for that. And so we're giving back in that way. And then the Snowflake Fair, November 12th. That is really happening. We have all of our, our vendor slots uh, filled up. And we have uh, a couple food trucks, and, we, and Nicole's working on the, the silent auction. The, the first year back after COVID should be a big one, so don't miss that. All right, any other announcements that I may be missing? I try to be, I'm trying to be more intentional about getting the announcements out to you. Um, so hopefully I didn't miss anything. Yes. Uh, joyful noise next Sunday. Yes, joyful noise next Sunday. If you'd like to ring some bells and join in song, uh, please join tomorrow morning, next Sunday morning, uh, 8:30. Is it? 8:30 to the bells, 9:15 for singing. Okay, perfect. 8:30 for bells, 9 o'clock for singers. 9:15. 9:15 for singers. All right, let's take a deep breath and center ourselves and our hearts and minds as we begin uh, this sacred time of worshiping God, 
this morning. Well, let us begin by a responsive reading in your order of service. Please join me. Come, beloved of God, and pause in the place of liminal longing. We come twixt and between, hold in many directions. Trust that the Holy One is already forming a new creation in you. Um, trusting God's mercy to center and change us. Indeed, the Holy One calls you by name for deeds of mercy. May God's ancient action be a present presence as we gather. Amen. Let us sing together, O grant us God a little space, number 516 in your New Century hymn book. 516.
Let us pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. words for us. Good morning. This week is the UCC's Access Sunday and Disabilities Awareness Week. Jacob Knoll is a member of the UCC Disabilities Ministries. On this Disabilities Awareness Week, he checks in about how music connects us to God and how the church can do a better job in welcoming people with disabilities. Quote, the church where I'm a member is a congregational UCC of Nina Menasha in Nina, Wisconsin. My pastor is Reverend David Frey. I started playing piano at the age of five. As my cerebral palsy affects primarily the left side of my body, learning to play the piano with both hands was a challenge. I taught myself a workable method, which involves playing piano with six fingers, one in use on my left hand. My right hand takes care of the melody in bass clef fill notes. In high school, I had the opportunity to take private piano lessons with an experienced professor who helped me refine that technique. I feel supported and affirmed as a musician. Music connects people to God in several important ways. Hymn lyrics, for example, can help us cement our theology. The experience of sharing music together can help worship become more communal and engaging. If implemented well, music can help us connect to the full range of human experience, 
uncontainable joy, or raging lament. Sharing the full range of the human emotion deepens our relationship with God. The wider church perspective on disability, however, needs work. For example, many churches are unable to prioritize full inclusion of disabled people because building modifications are cost prohibitive or accommodating to neurodiverse needs in worship spaces seems too difficult. We miss an opportunity when we are inclusive of other marginalized populations but do not put the same energy into drawing the circle wider to the disability community. Jacobs shared his story in hopes to inspire other churches, church communities, to accommodate their church spaces to those of all abilities so they are able to come to worship. This is your mission and mine. Thank you. Thank you, Gina. All right. Kids, come on down. So I'm going to ask you a question. It's an important question. It's one you should ask yourself every day, okay? What are you grateful for? What are you thankful for, grateful for? Family. Family? Okay. Your house? Yeah. Yeah. Especially when it gets cold, right? You need a warm place to sleep. Yes. Pets? Your pets? Seven. Waking up. Waking up is a good thing to be grateful for. It's better than the alternative. <laughs> Anybody else? How about you? What are you grateful for? The sun. The sun. Floridian speaking. Beautiful fall day. Beautiful fall day. Yes. Good health. Good health. Good Being health. church every Sunday. This church every Sunday. Yes. Yeah, so, so, such an important question. So there's a story that you're going to be looking at, I think, in, in your Sunday school, where Jesus rewards gratitude. When others kind of forget about being grateful, Jesus rewards the one who is. And it's so important to be grateful as, as much as you can, even when you feel like you're grumpy, <laughs> or when things are not going so well, if you can find just one thing you're grateful for. You'll be surprised at how it can turn a bad day around or can uplift your spirits and keep you keep you keeping on. You know that saying, keep you keeping on? Sometimes we just need to keep on keeping on. And so being grateful is a good way to do that, to help us get through those hard times, even when we don't feel like being joyful. And gratitude, we're going to discuss this. I'm going to discuss this with the adults. Gratitude leads to something else. Can you think of what it leads to? For grateful, uh, even amidst difficult times, what does it lead to, would you think? It's a three-lettered word. It begins with J. Joy. Joy. <laughs> Gratitude is the, the way into a life of joy. So that's so important. Gratitude begets joy. It, it births joy. So it's important to be grateful as much as you can, even on, on those days when you are grumpy or you're having a bad day, okay? In school, whatever it may be. So that's my lesson for you. Be grateful as much as you can, okay? You can follow your Sunday school teacher out, I think. That's all I today. It's a famous song, but maybe you don't know it. And I'm going to play a song that is 
based on that psalm, Psalm 129, one of the most famous psalms in, in, in the psalms, the book of psalms. And, and uh, this will help you listen deeply as we hear a beautiful rendition of this psalm, at least a portion of this psalm, by the group All Sons and Daughters. Verses 11 through 18, 19. 
On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered the village, ten men with skin disease approached him. Keeping their distance from him, they raised their voices and said, Jesus, Master, show us mercy. When Jesus saw them, he said, go show yourselves to the priests. As they left, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw that he had been healed, returned and praised God with a loud voice. He fell on his face at Jesus' feet and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus replied, weren't ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? No one returned to praise God except this, some, this foreigner. Then Jesus said to him, get up and go. Your faith has healed you. This is the good news of God. Thanks be to God. So we're going through the fruit of the Spirit, the manifestations of the fruit of the Spirit. There's nine of them. And uh, our passage comes from Galatians 5, that Paul lays out the fruit of the Spirit. Let me just read that as we begin. Galatians 5, 13 through 14, and 22 through 23. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the basest part of you, rather serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. Then the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control against such things there is no law. So today we're discussing joy and peace, the, the second and third manifestations of the fruit of the joy of, of the Spirit. Don't not know about you, but I associate these two things, joy and peace, with the holidays, with Christmas. Our uh, two Advent candles, two out of the four, represent joy and peace. Maybe you forgot that. <laughs> There's the passage from Luke 2. Good tidings of great joy on earth, peace and goodwill toward men, human beings. There is that carol, it came upon a midnight clear with the lyrics, angels bending near the earth with news of joy foretold. Peace on earth, goodwill to men. As for us now, and here in October, a few months from Christmas, we have Paul mentioning uh, joy and peace, the second and third uh, manifestations of the fruit of the Spirit. For Paul, Jesus brings joy and peace, and joy and peace, fruit of the Spirit as a whole, are there for us to cultivate and realize thanks to Jesus. Before we delve into the two realities here of joy and peace, let's remind ourselves what we're talking about. We are talking about the fruit of the Spirit. The title of the sermon is Cultivating Joy and Peace, but in actuality, joy and peace is the result of this cultivating process, and we're cultivating the Spirit. Cultivation of fruit begins with cultivating the root and the soil of ourselves, which is the spirit. So we're cultivating the spirit, which leads to joy and peace. Cultivating the spirit gives way to the fruit of the spirit, included in which is joy and peace. But how do we cultivate the spirit? Big question. How? It's simple. We spend time in the presence of the Spirit of God. We breathe in the Spirit of God. We breathe in the breath of God, which is another way of saying Spirit of God. And our own breath, our own spirits, grow almost naturally, 
Again, it's not too hard. Spend time in the Spirit of God. And this simple practice of spending time in God's presence, what I often term sitting with God, rests in the background of our conversation today. So it's, it's always on the surface of this practice of sitting with God, sitting in God's presence. So let's talk about joy. So let me first say joy derives from our connection to the Spirit. There is a kind of conversion here at first. We turn to joy. And we declare that we are ready to connect to joy. We decide to be joyful, to let joy fill us, to envelop us, and the result is the beginnings of joy. And then it goes deep. It's a practice. Practice makes perfect. Joy in, practicing that, letting joy in, and deeply so, and what results joy, joy outward. The second thing to consider about joy is that joy is not a feeling. It's not a feeling, but a way of being. Joy is not happiness, in other words. And here's an example, a simple example that shows us the difference between joy and happiness. If you feel you're being punished and are suffering and you say, I'm happy, <laughs> we'd say you're some kind of masochist who is happy amid pain. But if you were to say amid suffering, I still know joy deep down. We'd wonder about it, but we'd wonder how. How is that the case? Joy is a deep down in my heart kind of thing. You know that kid's song? I got joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Deep down in my heart. Where? Deep down in my heart. Joy lives in the heart. Happiness is more of a feeling that comes and goes. Joy is a state, a way of being that is more permanent. A third thing that I'd like to mention about joy is joy is on one side of a coin. If you can, can envision a coin. Joy is on one side and what's on the other side? We discuss with the kids gratitude. Gratitude. Gratitude and joy go together. You can't have one without the other. Brené Brown, the author and thinker, and uh, she's a so social worker as well, says it right. Gratitude begets joy. In the research, she says, we learned that the most effective way to cultivate joy in our lives is to practice gratitude. There's a story in the book of Acts that I'd like to look at that sort of encapsulates all of this. It's, it's a well-known story uh, for church folks. Uh, and I'd like to, it's the story of the two great missionaries, Paul and Silas. Let me introduce that song by a, giving a song, or playing a, a snippet of a song that um, maybe you recognize. It's from... Uh, the Civil Rights Movement, it's a freedom song that begins like this. Paul and Silas found a jail, and no money for the good and Keep your hands on the ground, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, keep your hands on the As the 
full story goes, Paul and Silas uh, are arrested for healing a possessed woman uh, who was enslaved, and she was making money for her, the one who enslaved her by fortune telling. Uh, so when Paul and Silas heals this woman, this possessed woman, she's no longer possessed and is no longer able to fortune tell. And so that means no more money for the one enslaving her who was not pleased at all. Paul and Silas interrupted prophets uh, that day. And so both he and a group of people there uh, in Rome physically attack Paul and Silas. Uh, and then the authorities join in. They beat and arrest uh, Paul and Silas, severe, severely beating them. And they throw them in jail without a trial. And while in jail, what happens? First of all, Paul, Paul and si Silas, even amid a time of struggle and pain, choose gratitude and joy. There in jail, they pray and sing hymns. Acts 16.25 says, About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them, praying and singing hymns, praising God, the epitome of gratitude. And the result was joy that the prisoners witnessed. The very next verse gives us the result, the effect. Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake, verse 26 says, that the foundation of the prison was shaken. And once all the prisoners' doors flew open, at once all the prison doors flew open, and everyone's chains came loose. See, there's a certain kind of freedom that results from gratitude and joy. Chains are broken when in the face of struggle we dig deep and find joy and some reason to be grateful. Gratitude begets joy. And gratitude and joy amid struggle especially begets freedom, a sense of freedom. And with a sense of freedom within us, what comes next? What comes with it? The third manifestation of the fruit of the Spirit. Peace. Peace. Inner peace. So we move to that reality of peace entailed in the fruit of the Spirit. Peace, as I suggested, in some ways, stems from inner, inner joy. If joy is indeed deep in the heart, peace is there too. You can almost guarantee it. Peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. And joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain. They're both found in the same song of life. Another truth to consider about peace our, our paradigm of uh, what you take in naturally moves out. That paradigm applies here too. Peace in, peace out. God's peace in, godly peace out. This truth is partly why we pause and sit in quiet during worship. You, you've heard people say, when they're ex ex exasperated, especially. Can I get some peace and quiet? <laughs> Parents are used to that question. Well, peace and quiet go together. So the hope is during these moments of quiet, you take God's peace in. The hope is that you will in turn take God's peace out. Out with you as you leave the sanctuary. The hope is that you will bring that divine peace within you out into the world, so steeped in conflict, division, and violence. As for Paul and Silas, you know the rest of the story, right? Paul and Silas choose not to flee 
Though their chains are broken and the prison doors are open, instead they show care to a prisoner there who was so afraid about his fate with the prisoners escaping that on his watch they escaped, that he, he's about to commit suicide. Think about his job being lost. Think about the persecution that would follow because of this. Suicide became real to him, an option. And Paul and Silas stop him. The Jesus followers lead the prisoner to God through the compassion, through the compassion of Christ. Still, Paul and Silas are still unjustly detained. They don't just flee. The prisoner still has them with him. The authorities must have caught on to that. Uh, it's implied in the story from Acts uh, that, uh, that Paul and Silas were Roman citizens, and so they, their treatment was especially unlawful. And so the, tri the authorities tried to uh, quietly let them walk, uh, kind of forget about it all like it never happened because they're Roman citizens and were, were not due such treatment. But Paul would have none of that. Yes, they expressed joy in prison and were compassionate to the prisoner, but Paul was having none of Rome's unjust treatment. Verse 37 says, Paul said to the officers, they beat us publicly without a trial, even though we are Roman citizens, and threw us into prison. And now do they want to get rid of us quietly, no, let them come themselves and escort us out. Paul and Silas's steadfastness and their sense of compassion, along with justice, which, is their, which was their way of being as Jesus' followers, this was indicative of a deep sense of peace. Compassion and justice derived from an inner reservoir of peace. A peace that passes all understanding, Paul would write. A peace that belies circumstances and belies the struggles we face. I'd like to close by going back to the song I played, Eyes on the Prize. That title is also the name of a, a Terrific documentary, a PBS documentary from years ago. You can still watch it, and I highly recommend it. Episode 3 of the Eyes on the Prize documentary is titled, Ain't Scared of Your Jails. That episode discusses how civil rights protesters were often jailed in their pursuit of freedom and equality and justice, a struggle for those things. Those civil rights activists in jail found inspiration in the story of Paul and Silas, a story they knew deep down in their souls. They too prayed and sang hymns in those jails in the South. They too tapped into their inner source of joy and voiced gratitude in the face of struggle. They too found in the rightness of their cause and in the strength of their faith a deep sense of peace. This deeply grounded sense of joy and peace, true manifestations of the fruit of the Spirit, enabled them to keep on keeping on. Or in the words of our song, to keep on holding on. So as you leave this space, Get your hands on the gospel plow. Don't take nothing for your journey now. Keep your eyes on the prize. Hold on. No, the only chain we've meant, we're meant to stand is that chain of hands in hand. Keep your eyes on the prize. Hold on. May all of us 
Keep on keeping on. Carry God's love from town to town. Keep your eyes on the prize. Hold on. For therein, within the peace, within the gospel of love, is found joy and peace. Amen. So let us sit with this a bit in quiet as we reflect on God's word and what it means to us. Let us have a moment of quiet as we pause and sit with God. Let us sing. Let us sing together. Number 284 in your hymnals. Joys are flowing like a river. 284.
joy, a sorrow, a concern, an aspiration, a hope to share with us this morning. Yes. Uh, Amen. Hey, Mary Ann's friend Mary's. Uh, Angela Westfall. Uh, Angela, I'm sorry. Angela. I pray for her. She lost her teenage son, is it? Yes. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Wow. Whew. Hey, how you doing? Kurt Phil Fuller's here. Yeah. Uh, joy. <laughs> Blessings to see you. And and your your wife, I haven't met her. I will afterward. <laughs> Good to see you. Anybody else? Yes. Yeah, I'd like pray your prayers for Martin Stick as she goes in for an operation Tuesday for heart surgery and then after the heart surgery they're gonna put her in an induced coma for twenty four hours to see if her heart's gonna be okay. Yeah, that's that it's it's a definite And she's going to New Haven Hospital. Okay. Okay. So Sebi's co worker friend is, uh, has heart surgery in that process. That's my cousin's wife. Cousin's wife, I'm sorry. Yeah. Where I work for. Sure. Anybody else? Yes. A uh, very good friend of ours in New Jersey passed away during this past week. Oh, Ray Martin. Sorry. Carl and Ellen's friend Ray passed away suddenly. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, Ed. Just around as imperfectly as the Thanks, Ed. That's, that's beautiful. beautifully said. Gratitude for all of you. <laughs> I echo those sentiments. Uh, several church members that I know have COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there are a couple, maybe three that I know are dealing with COVID. It's still with us, fortunately. Nothing too severe, but it's, uh, it's bothersome for sure. Anybody else? Okay. Let us pray. Oh God, we, we are grateful for all you are and all you provide us. We are thankful for our breaths, first and foremost. We often take for granted the sacredness of our breath, our breathing and that it comes from you, O breath of God. May we rest in you uh, and in gratitude for all we are given. We are also grateful for this community, as Ed shared, uh, full of resilient people who have uh, faced uh, struggle and, and grief and, and uh, hardship but who keep on keeping on, resting in your, your presence and somehow finding joy and gratitude amid the struggle. We also lift up those who are enduring um, sickness during this season of, of COVID and, and the flu even. Uh, we pray for all, all those who are not feeling well, whether it be bodily or physically or spiritually, we lift them up to you, O great physician, and we pray that you would give them your strength, your, your presence, and your healing, your wholeness all around. 
We also lift up the, those uh, who are enduring phys uh, financial difficulties during these troubling times of high inflation. It's so difficult to pay the bills for many. We pray for your endurance and resilience for them, uh, that they would um, rest in you and uh, see light at the end of this long tunnel. We also lift up our communities uh, here as um, school is happening and uh, we, we enter um, campaign season. We pray that through it all, uh, your compassion would shine through us and wisdom and compassion would be brought forth. And may we find the way of civility even amidst our differences, O oh God. We also lift up our state as well as our nation in, in the same regard. Uh, and we lift up our leaders as well as scripture commands us to do. Uh, may they find in you uh, the way, the way of love, and uh, to lead accordingly, O oh God. We pray as we continue on with worship that we would uh, find you in our presence, learn of you, and live out your ways throughout the week. And be with us through this week, showing us your, your light and your love. And for this, we'll give you our thanks. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. It's on your right as you exit. It's for your tithes, your offerings, your gifts. And we know that our financial contributions to this congregation come from sacrifice and hard work. We are so grateful for this, and we commit together to ensure the funds we gather collectively do a greater good for ourselves and our world than they could have done alone. And that's why we give. May the gifts, tithes, and offerings given sustain and grow the life and mission of this congregational God. May we give in love and in hope, knowing God is pleased. Amen.